فيكم بحلقة جديدة من برنامجكم الأسبوعي بدازل خلونا ما نضيع وقت لأنه الحلقة هلأ رح تكون أكثر من حماسية دبي بتعتبر واحدة من المدن اللي بتستضيف أهم الأحداث والفعاليات والمهرجانات اللي بتصير بالعالم بس هلأ خلونا ننسى كل شيء ونركز عيوننا على الإكسبو 2020 وخاصة بعد الافتتاح الأكثر من رائع والمبهر اللي صار خلونا نتعرف أكثر بهالروبرتاج يلتقي العالم بأسره على أرض دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة واليوم نشهد معا انطلاقة جديدة نفتتح على بركة الله أكسبو 2020 دبي والله ولي التوفيق هلا صار وقت الغنى والرقص والميوزك وخاصة مع مانج ميوزك Welcome to Bedazzled. Thank you very much. So tell us about your story, your career, how you started it, and the journey to becoming who you are today. It, when we started, it was like when we was 15, 16 years old. And at 15, 16 years old, we didn't really know much about what we wanted to do in life. So what we was doing was playing cricket, playing football, and doing the usual kid stuff. Uh, however, we had this one spark of like, we wanted to, uh, we liked music. So we used to listen to a lot of Michael Jackson, listen to a lot of Gora music, not so much Punjabi music uh, being brought up in, in the UK. And then some of my close friends introduced us to more Punjabi music and we started listening to Guldeep Manak and some really old school Punjabi and the UK bands like Alap and Pradesi and, and these people, which then made us want to make music. And making music, we just, we just did anything and everything we possibly could to try to make music. From tapping on tables, to hitting sticks on things and recording just on a tape recorder. But we had this one opportunity to, to DJ at my younger brother Serge's birthday party, 16th birthday party. And this created so, so much hype at this birthday party 
everybody started booking us for, oh, come and do our show, come and do our wedding, come and do our this. And then from then on, we just got into music production. Then RDB came, we started recording more songs from Punjab, making the UK Pangra scene, and then so on, so on, and went from there to Bollywood to today. And about your association with Snoop Dogg, how did that happen? Snoop Dogg uh, was actually the second choice, believe it or not, of Akshay Pajis. So originally, Akshay said to us that, listen boys, um, I need someone big, an artist from the US, uh, bring him and uh, well, let's put him on a Bollywood song on my next movie. And we said, Pajit, what a crazy idea. No problem, let's make a beat. So we made a beat and it was just a simple beat. So we, we sent the beat uh, uh, to Akshay Pajit. He loved the beat and he said, get me 50 cent. So we said, oh, okay, 50 cent. And I was living in Toronto at the time. So I had a lot of connections with some people in the US. And we reached out to 50 cent. We sent him the beat to his management and he didn't like the beat. He said, no, no, I don't like the beat. I don't, I'm not gonna rap on this song. So we went back and said to Akshay Padi, sorry Padi, but 50 Cent doesn't like the beat. And he's like, well, I like the beat. I was like, okay, let's let's see who else would match. Then we thought, why not Snoop? Snoop was really big back then. So he said, ha ha, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, take it, take it, Snoop Dogg karto. So we contacted Snoop and he loved the beat. And instantly, you know, he goes, I'm gonna jump on the song. What's the song about? He, he really got, emotionally involved in the song like he he wanted to know what's it about sing is king okay turbans duh, this that blah. i'll talk about bombay i'll talk about this i'll talk about that and he rapped it when we sent it to akshay Paji, he was blown away and he's like okay i need to rap on this so then uh, yeah then akshay rapped in punjabi himself as well and uh, it became one of the biggest sadar sing is king hits ever and what about ushna shah how did you connect with her for this video so ushna um i go to to Pakistan and to do a few shows here and there and uh, my uh, friends of mine out in uh, Lahore said listen you should bring you should get a Pakistani actress and I was like I don't know if I can work with Pakistani actresses I don't really know them maybe their mentality is a little bit different I don't know and he goes you know try this this girl her name's Ushna Shah but she's Canadian she's from Canada and I was like oh Okay. I've actually been fortunate enough to have done them for some great artists in the beginning of my career. I was also an Indian artist and then later on I did one for Josh and that was about seven years ago. And uh, now I'm doing one for Manj and I'm, I'm very lucky because of course I've been listening to, I don't want him to feel old, but I've been listening to Manj since, I mean we all have since we were, you know, so we've grown up to that music and it's just an honor. It's and we met in Karachi. And that was it. I mean, you know, she's very, she's very bubbly. She's very open. She's very loud, and she's Canadian. So we kind of got on on a on a good foot. So I said, you know what, Jalo, let's do this. Let's let's do the music video and let's have you feature in the video. And we shot the video in Dubai and Lahore, um, and uh, and and that was it. And then we thought, okay, let's let's put this out and release this out on which label? On our own label. And that's where you know Ashwin Bai came in, and me and Ashwin collectively connected through a friend of ours, Karan. Same wavelength and same motto of developing a brand which can promote uh, music from various streams, getting East to West, collaborating together, getting artists together, uh, making uh, new talent develop. So that actually the common motto and the common goal led to the development of Music on Global. And uh, I could see Ashwin was already doing many, many big things here in Dubai. So I was like, okay, maybe if the synergy is right, when I meet him, maybe this might be an opportunity for both of us to grow something new. And it worked out amazing. It worked out amazing. And touch wood, hopefully it'll carry on. So your song is called Kangana. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's the story with that? I've had people put in comments, you're promoting Kangana or not <laughs> in this song. And I'm like, eh, well, not really. We think Kangana is the song. This is actually one of my first story-based music videos. And that's what I'm trying to go in that direction. Just like Michael Jackson used to make small movies as music videos, I'm trying to do the same thing. We shot at some beautiful locations in Dubai and uh, the whole team worked so hard. It was such a, a good experience shooting a, a story-based music video rather than uh, just a hoo ha 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 let's do this music video. So I think that's about it, but of course we're not going to let you go without a song, so you have to do us the honour. I'll sing one of my classic, my first songs I ever sang in my life, which was Aja Mahi. Uh, this was also written by Dad. Oh, Aja Mahi, Aja Mahi, Aa Sodeya Ve Aake Aaj Mere Gal Lag Jaatu Aja Mahi, Aja Mahi, Aa Sodeya Aake Aaj Gal Lag Jaatu 
Ajmai. Thank you so much for being on Bedazzled Manj. It was a pleasure having you with us. Thank you very much. Raha zghire, we'll come back and finish the episode. إفتل لوران قال الأزياء تتلاشى لكن الأناقة أبدية وهلأ بما أنه قرب الديوالي وكتير منا بيفكر شو لازم نرتدي هل لازم يكون زي هندي تقليدي ولا فينا ندخل بعد التتش الحديث وزهرة رح تساعدنا بهالموضوع dedicating this episode to all the ladies that believe in less is more because the lesser you deck up the classier you look as you can see i'm wearing an all black formal outfit bell bottom trousers hair or a blazer but to add that ethnic touch i've only styled it with a bottle green banarsi dupatta ekdam sari ke style mein pehna hai usko i've tucked it from one corner and draped it over my shoulder but to put on a statement kundan choker will complete your minimalistic look For the second outfit, I've picked a simple full flare organza lehenga. Agar aapke paas koi skirt ho to wo bhi chal jayega and I've paired it with a black layered shirt. I have always mentioned any neutral colors will work whether it's black, white or nude. A metallic silver neck piece around the collar can add the much needed sparkle that you need and you can sum up your look with loose beach curls. For all the boss ladies out there, if you too are a blazer lover like me, then this look is definitely for you. I've picked my favorite camel blazer and paired it with a nude turtle neck top, and giving it my desi tarka are my brocade straight cut trousers. You can accessorize the look with a gold chic belt and some jhumkas, and you're ready for your thumkas. If you know me enough, you would know that my grand finale look has to be the extravagant one. Putting together a very unconventional ensemble for this look, I picked up my grey flare jumpsuit and since greys go so well with yellows, I've paired it with my yellow brocade choli. Jo aapke lehenge ke saath choli aati hai, the blouse that you get, it could be of any bright color, yellows, oranges and they'll work well with the grey. You can add a gold belt to complete the look. और बस दुपट्टा उठाओ और गाओ हुज द हार इज गर्ल इन द वर्ल्ड माई दे सी गर्ल माई दे सी गर्ल हैप्पी दिवाली लेडीज الشركة العالمية دوفار المختصة بالمواد الصحية والعقامة بالشرق الأوسط بتعقد شراكة مع خدمات حماية الفيروس ليوصلوا لمستحضرات اسمها سيتروكس سيتروكس بتتميز بأنها مواد طبيعية 100% خالية من المواد الكيميائية والكحوليات وهالشي بخليها آمنة للاستخدام وحتى للأطفال بسن صغير خلونا نتعرف أكثر على هالمستحضرات بهالروبورتاج We are uh, uh, celebrating the launch of the first and only fully organic, uh, eco-friendly uh, product that would protect against all kinds of bacteria and viruses, including the coronavirus, the COVID-19. We, as the organization Dofar Global and VPS, have joined hands together to make sure that we achieve our dream. And these dream is nothing; it's more than to protect people. And what we are looking at. that how do we protect a common human pet or anyone who's there in this part of the world i truly believe that everything and every disease that exists in, on earth has an a natural organic remedy for it it just takes us time to find it we believe this is a revolutionary product and uh, we've taken time to bring it out but it's uh, an innovation from an existing invention from decades ago that has now been uh, innovated further to bring it to the use of, uh, of antivirus sanitization the objective is to make sure that everything should be very safe and protecting the environment we want something which should be 100% organic 
100% sustainable, which is uh, in line with the Expo 2020 objective. And what we are looking at is mostly a family safe environment. Um, I got involved with Citrox through my capacity in the cleaning market in the UK. Um, and I just fell in love with the product. It was something that we'd, we'd needed for some time that was more environmentally sound, but that was gonna be effective as well. And as we know, there's lots of products out there that you can do general cleaning with, but do they act as a disinfectant? Do they, you know, sanitize a surface? And so this, this was one of those first products that really was able to deliver on both sanitization and environmentally sound properties. A big, a big one for me is sustainability, whether it's ethical, ethical manufacturing, sustainability, recycling. I believe we're at a period in time now where uh, protecting the planet is key. I mean, we're the custodians of the planet at the moment. We're seeing lots and lots of problems daily all across the globe. And I would highly recommend to go for the products which we have launched, which works as a barrier. It doesn't contaminate and also make sure that uh, it keeps your environment healthy and hygiene. خلينا نروح مع استراحة صغيرة ونرجع نكمل حلقتنا سوا. في مقولة شهيرة للكاتب الأمريكي ألبرت هوبرت بتقول: "أعمل لتصبح وليس فقط لتكسب المال". وهلا صار وقت الفقرة المهنية مع شين وبيتر. It's career tip time. And today, we're going to be talking about managing your personal brand through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a really important way for job seekers to gain access to roles and give themselves the best chance of getting a job. Today, we're going to be talking about four key elements of managing your LinkedIn brand. The first element is the basics. The second is search engine optimization. The third is thought leadership. And the fourth is contactability. So in the first element here, we talk about the basics. It's important to have a professional photo on your LinkedIn profile, and even more important to make sure that your personal profile exactly matches the skills that, and the jobs that you have really had. Don't make up fiction on your LinkedIn profile because it can be easily checked, but make sure that the basics of your profile match the companies that you worked for and the real jobs that you've done. And then when you're working on your search engine optimization, you wanna make sure that you have a nice, clearly focused profile. You don't want to be all things to all people. Pretty soon you won't be anything to anybody. So you, if you're a chief marketing officer, make sure that all your roles are marketing roles. Anything that you've done that's not related to marketing, get it off your profile. Don't put it there. So if you're a chief marketing officer that likes to do career coaching on the side, don't bother listing the career coaching piece. So we want to see people who are really focused because we, we want to make sure that they're going to join the company, they're going to stay in the role for a long time. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that you have all the buzzwords in your profile, all the keywords. And so write out a little bit of context for each of your positions and make sure that you're putting those buzzwords in. So anything that someone would Google search for your role, make sure that's in your profile. But then the way to really stand out on LinkedIn is posting thought leading articles. So this is your opportunity to show that you're a thought leader in your field, that you have professional expertise, that you have a point of view, you should be heard in the marketplace. And so by staying up to date on current trends and posting interesting articles gives you the best chance of standing out and being seen as a thought leader in your industry. The final piece, which always drives me crazy, is when executives are not making themselves accessible. So if you want a big opportunity, big opportunities don't sit on the market for a long time. You have a small window. So when the recruiter or headhunter looks at your profile, put your mobile number on your profile. Don't worry, people are not going to call you in the middle of the night. In fact, if you put your mobile number on your profile, you'll actually find very few people will actually call unless they have a very strong fit of a role for you. And watch out with the email because the email is the one that you will get blasted with, with, with spam bots and all of that. The mobile number, make it easy for your headhunter to reach you. And that's the key thing, accessibility. And this is Shade and Pete wishing, wishing all, all of your dreams come true. true. وهلا خلص وقت الانتظار وخاصه لعشاق سلسله الافلام الشهيره جيمس بوند 
بموسمه الأخير والجزء الأخير لوقت للموت خلونا نتعرف أكثر عن هالفيلم مع سانتوس Welcome to Watch Me If You Can Kumar, Santosh Kumar Reviewing No Time To Die Daniel Craig's last outing as the world-saving British superhero We will talk about the film in just a minute but let us talk about the actors who have played Bond so far My favourite being Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan in that order Not so much of a fan of George Lazenby and Timothy Dalton but Daniel Craig kicked off a franchise of films starting with Casino Royale and this is his fifth film and the last one in the Bond series so far. No Time to Die begins with where Spectre ends where Bond is out with Madeleine Swan and he is almost heading towards retirement. Unlike all the other Bond films, the nemesis played by Rami Malek's Safin is short of expectations compared to a Javier Bardem from Skyfall who was far more menacing. Leah Sadiu reprises a character of Madeleine Swan, the psychiatrist treating Blofeld. For the first time in any Bond film history, we have a new 007 played by Lashana Lynch. Coming back to the antagonist played by Rami Malek, like I said, he has a very short role and is far less menacing. Unlike Sean Connery or Pierce Brosnan or Roger Moore, who are far more macho, strong, intelligent, and always out to save the world. Daniel Craig's Bond is soft and vulnerable, strong physically but mentally more emotional and this is a tearful farewell to the Bond franchise so far. We don't know who's going to reprise the role next. Ralph Fiennes as N, Christoph Waltz as Blofeld, Naomi Harris as Moneypenny are all there in their respective characters. Mike Grouse is with Ben Wyshaw's role of Q. I am sure we all miss Dennis Llewellyn's portrayal of Q who was far more petrified of Bond destroying all his creative gadgets. Just like the other Bond films and the Daniel Craig uh, versions of Bond, the action is absolutely fantastic. It starts off with an action, there's a lot of action scenes and gunfights and you know, throw in a lot of extra characters. But towards the end it becomes slow just like Skyfall which is one of the slowest Bond films I have ever seen. I personally hated Spectre but this one is still a worth watch simply because it's the last. For all Bond fans, this one is not to be missed, but for all the others, watch Mission Impossible instead. Our next review for today is Chehre, Amitabh Bachchan and Imran Hashmi's outing, which is now out on Amazon Prime. The courtroom drama thriller set in one guest house, Chehre aims to make a social commentary on criminal justice in India and it's filled with veteran actors such as Ritiman Chatterjee, Anu Kapoor and Raghuveer Yadav. This film also has Rhea Chakravarti in a very brief role after her battle with the legal system in India. And it also marks the return of Rumi Jafri as a director who has moved from doing comedy to a serious courtroom drama, a thriller perhaps. Essentially set inside one room inside a cottage, the film is a portrayal of a trial in a room against all these oldies trying to deliver justice in a mock trial. It's an engaging thriller and it keeps you engrossed till the end except for the monologue towards uh, the end which is quite long uh, despite being delivered by Amitabh Bachchan's baritone. But the scenes between Imran Hashmi and Amitabh are commendable. For all the Amitabh Bachchan fans out there, this is a must watch. For all the Imran Hashmi fans, this is a must watch. For all the others, until next time, watch me if you can. This is Santosh. وهيك بتكون خلصت حلقتنا لهالاسبوع، بس موعدنا بيتجدد الاسبوع القادم بحلقة جديدة ومواضيع أكثر. كونوا كتار.